spinal flexion and low back pain. Whether you're exercising, gardening, playing with your kids, or doing housework, any of those bending movements have specific names based on the direction that your spine goes. Please like, share, comment and subscribe this video. There's flexion, or bending forward, extending, which is an arching back type movement, side bending, also known as tilting, and rotation, or twisting. Let's explore perhaps the most frequently performed spinal action of all, flexion. A familiar movement for most of us, spinal flexion is the act of bending forward. It's what you're specifically told not to do when lifting heavy items, gardening, and other manual tasks. Understanding how flexion works and its effect on the body may help manage your back pain. Spinal flexion and herniated disc risk too much spinal flexion, or spinal flexion that is loaded, either because you're carrying something with a substantial amount of weight, or you're twisting your spine as you bend, may negatively affect your intervertebral discs. It may even cause a herniated disc injury. A herniated disc occurs when the outer covering of a spinal disc, which is known as the annulus fibrosus frays or breaks, and the disc's liquid center nucleus pulposus, leaks out. If the nucleus pulposus happens to land on a spinal nerve root, as it often does, you'll likely experience pain and or other nerve symptoms, collectively known as radiculopathy. Herniated disc injuries sometimes get better without surgery, but this can take a year or so. Point one, with conservative care only, symptoms tend to dissipate once the disc material is resorbed into the body. Physical therapy can help manage the pain while you wait, should you decide to go this route. But many people who sustain a herniated disc want a quicker fix, so they opt for a discectomy surgery. Point one. Flexion of the spine and deformity were all subject to the force of gravity, which can compress the spine incrementally over time. In turn, this may lead to a chronically flexed spinal position, called kyphosis. Unless you are very mindful about your posture, you may not even notice your kyphosis until it becomes extreme or results in pain. Sitting at the computer, driving, and carrying children are examples of activities that may lend themselves to spinal flexion postural misalignment. Along with kyphosis, spinal flexion as a daily habit over time may contribute to scoliosis or swayback. In these conditions, the chronic spinal flexion position is called the sagittal component. Sagittal refers to movement, in this case of the spine and trunk, that goes in forward or backward directions. Spinal flexion and spinal stenosis in some cases, extraspinal flexion is desired. For example, if you have spinal stenosis, you may experience the classic symptom of neurogenic claudication. Generally, getting your spine into a flexed position helps relieves the pain and cramping associated with neurogenic claudication. It's wise to consult with your doctor and or physical therapist for the best positions and exercises given your individual condition. And you may want to consider acupuncture, as well. A March 2018 study published in the journal BMC Complementary and Alternative Medicine compared medication, exercise, and acupuncture for managing lumbar spinal stenosis. Of the three treatments, acupuncture resulted in the most improvement, both for symptoms and physical functioning. Prevent back problems related to spinal flexion The easiest way to prevent back problems that arise from chronic spinal flexion is to keep your core, which includes your ab and back muscles, both flexible and strong. Obviously, a back exercise program should help you do this. In particular, yoga and pilates not only strengthen muscles but they also develop your spinal alignment. Point 3 With these systems, you'll exercise your back in all the directions your spine can move. Plus, their emphasis on balanced action and whole body alignment may help re-establish an erect posture. Yoga poses to prevent back pain strength exercises are often done with your back arched and or twisted. Because arching, and to some degree twisting, are opposite actions to spinal flexion, exercises in these positions may counter habitual tendencies towards spinal flexion, which in turn, may reduce associated risks to your back. A word from very well there are some spinal conditions such as arthritis, facet joint problems, and others that may be irritated by arching and or twisting your back. And twisting may irritate a herniated disc, as well. If you are unsure about what to do given your symptoms, ask your doctor or physical therapist which back exercises to avoid and which are fair game. 
custom orthotics and shoe inserts for low back pain relief. To the many people seeking a non-invasive, non-toxic answer to their chronic back pain, it may seem like doctors are in a rush to prescribe medications including addictive opioids and or spine surgery. And patients who have been hurting for a long time are often vulnerable to suggestion, they may go with their doctor's recommendations simply because they are tired of the pain because nothing else has been suggested to them, and they haven't done their own research, or both. If this sounds like you, hold up a minute, and take a deep breath. Lots of chronic spine pain patients fare quite well by taking the conservative route only, this way of approaching relief may include physical therapy, lifestyle changes, for example losing weight and exercise, but it's not about surgery. And here's a tip, many spine experts believe that rather than banking on just one conservative treatment method, using a combination of approaches may yield the fastest and most profound results in terms of reduced pain and increased physical functioning. One of the many non-surgical approaches to low back pain that has been gaining in popularity, as well as piquing the interest of medical researchers, is the use of shoe inserts and or custom foot orthotics. In this article, we'll explore how foot support devices might help reduce your chronic back pain. Shoe inserts versus custom orthotics, what's the difference? There are foot supports and there are foot supports, so let's start by getting our terms straight. You can buy non-prescription shoe inserts, arch supports, and insoles, in other words, generic devices that slip into your shoe and alter, for better or worse, the positioning of your foot and ankle, at your local drugstore. You can also order them online. One way to recognize this type of insert is by the fact that they come pre-packaged and are mass-produced. The American Podiatric Medical Association APMA, says that you can also get so-called custom-made foot supports via specialty retail stores or online. But, the organization warns, unless the insert has been prescribed by a doctor and crafted specifically for your feet, it's considered an insert and not an orthotic. Types of inserts The APMA says the most common types of shoe inserts include arch support for high arches or flat feet, insoles for extra cushioning and support, heel liners for heel cushioning and support, and foot cushions for added comfort when the edges of your shoe chafe your foot. About custom orthotics Custom orthotics, on the other hand, are available by prescription only and are tailored with precision to your individual feet, their shape, posture, whether well aligned or not, and even the way they function day in and day out. That said, there's much disagreement among experts as to how effective custom orthotics really are, plus many in the industry believe they are overprescribed. And the price tag can be exorbitant, a 2006 New York Times article reported that. According to one industry professional, the cost of manufacturing one pair of orthotics was, at that time, $78. But as the customer, you'll likely pay at least double that, though it's often up to eight times more. One big reason for this is that prescribing practitioner, plus the manufacturer, will add in their profit to the base cost, driving it up significantly. The APMA points out that custom orthotics are made for you and only you, and in such a way that they precisely match the contours of your feet. This is so the orthotic can accommodate your unique foot structure and pathology, including, but not limited to back pain, they say. In general, custom orthotics do one, or both, of two things. They provide extra cushioning and support. They help to control the motion in your foot, which consists of 26 bones, and therefore many movable joints. By controlling motion, your custom orthotic may be able to keep your feet and ankles in the best position possible during standing, walking, running, and other weight-bearing activities. The APMA says that before you can order your custom orthotic, you'll need to get an evaluation of not only your feet but your entire lower extremity. Of course, they only recommend podiatrists for this, but many chiropractors plus some physical therapists and medical doctors offer the service as well. Once the evaluation is done, at that point the manufacturing of your custom orthotic starts, the APMA says. When do you need extra foot support? Shoe inserts and custom orthotics are used widely for foot problems. Common diagnoses for which various types of foot support are prescribed or recommended include flat arches, bunions, plantar fasciitis, diabetes-related neuropathy, and more. If you think you have any of these, speak with your doctor and or podiatrist. But what about back problems? Perhaps the most common spine-related reason for custom orthotics is a leg-length difference. 
A leg length difference aka leg length discrepancy can unlevel the pelvis which in turn may affect your spinal alignment and muscle balance. It works like this, as the short leg tries to reach the ground, which it does with every step you take, it essentially drags the pelvis on that side down with it. The result is the pelvis and hip on the short leg side become habitually lower than on the long leg side. A custom designed insert can help even out the effective length of the legs as well as restore balance to your pelvic position, especially in weight bearing activities. The pelvis functions as a base for spinal alignment and movement, so this type of correction may exert a big influence on your back health. Other than that, most experts agree that custom orthotics and other types of foot support are not geared towards any specific spine-related diagnosis. Rather, they are considered to be potentially useful for general maintenance. That said, one thing most experts do agree on is that foot pronation aka flat feet, is often related to low back pain. And foot pronation is something a good custom orthotic may be able to address. So how does foot pronation increase low back pain? Basically by one or two mechanisms. A 2014 study in the journal Foot found pronation to be due to posture abnormalities that start at the foot and translate to knee, hip, pelvis, and spine via what medical and fitness professionals call the kinetic chain. These posture abnormalities are basically related misalignments in the bones in those areas. The researchers also note changes in how the pelvic and low back muscles work as ways foot pronation may increase or bring about back pain. The authors add that more research is needed to give them the full picture on how practitioners might use orthoses to help change muscle use, body posture or both, and thereby relieve chronic low back pain. The good news is that new lines of questioning on the part of the research community may soon shed more light on this. In the meanwhile, the authors of the foot study justify future research by pointing out while the use of custom orthotics is a simple solution, it is a potentially very effective way to deal with chronic low back pain. Do orthotics work? The custom orthotic industry is booming these days perhaps because foot support offers a potential, non-surgical way to address long-standing back pain. But another reason may be that in some consumer circles, inserts and orthotics have become buzzwords, which, in turn, may lead to the unintended consequence of encouraging unscrupulous practitioners to capitalize on their popularity. To balance out the freewheeling activity that is likely taking place in the market, authors of a 2016 article published in the journal Foot provide an evidence-based summary and recommendation on the use of these devices. In it, they remind us that the use of orthotics and inserts are so far unproven by high-quality medical studies RCTs. Translated for U.S. health consumers, this means that the authors cannot confidently recommend foot supports as a treatment for people who are looking to relieve their chronic low back pain. But that's not the full picture. While it's true that more studies on the various aspects of shoe and foot support as it relates to low back pain relief are probably needed. The authors point out that extensive research on biomechanical mechanisms underlying the benefits of orthotics already exists, and could be used to help inform us about what works and what doesn't. Fortunately, the authors also tell us that pilot studies that are of excellent quality are beginning to pop up across the research landscape, which means we may soon see some answers. As I mentioned earlier, while podiatrists, MDs, and physical therapists all can prescribe orthotics as a solution to low back pain, it's often the chiropractor who is the entryway for people with low back pain. This is a good thing because a number of studies comparing orthotics to no treatment and to orthotics with chiropractic adjustments suggest that the most improvement can be had with a combination of the foot supports and adjustments. For example, a 2017 study published in the Archives of Physical Medicine Rehabilitation found that of the 225 people in the study, only those who wore shoe orthotics or wore them plus had chiropractic adjustments saw an improvement in the ability to physically function in their daily lives. All study participants, whether they wore shoe inserts or not, or had chiropractic treatment or not, were able to reduce their pain within six weeks' time. But those who had both chiropractic treatment and orthotics improved more than those whose treatment consisted of orthotics alone. A word from very well as long as it's the foot that is the driver of your back pain, orthotics may well make an effective pain relief solution. 
In other words, if you have a habit of pronating your foot, this less than ideal functionality may translate up the kinetic chain and contribute to your low back pain. Thus, pronation is the type of foot problem for which custom orthotics may be useful as you seek the relief you deserve. Exercises for back which will help you with back pain. Back pain has become the illness of today's generation. More people have the seating job, more people suffer with low back pain, cervical spine and vertebrae. When is it needed to focus and how to get rid of unpleasant back pain? You will get to know in this complex article about the largest muscles of the body, back. We will also show you 20 the most effective exercises with a focus on low, middle and upper part of back. The basic tips on how to get rid of back pain Back pain is usually the response to our long-time damaging of the back. That is why we decided to write down 12 basic rules, which every one of us should adopt. These are simple and effective tricks how to prevent the problems with back or how to relieve from the unpleasant pain. Even little indication of back pain needs to be dealt with to prevent the chronic illness of the back. Combination of physical activity, exercises for strengthening of the middle of body and stretching will help you to avert the first symptoms. Build the habit of these tips and your back will thank you. 1. Reduce the time spent in bed seriously, in which position you like to laze when in back pain? The specialists recommend people with back pain not to lay down in bed more than 3 days. At the same time, if you like to laze in the bed, think of the position of your back and rather give your time to some physical activity. 1, 4. 2. Exercise and strengthen your back Even short break is the medicine for your back. Simple exercising with focus on back can do a lot in your case too. As long as you suffer with back pain, avoid sports and activities which ballast the back. The adequate kind of sports activity is running, skating, swimming, dancing, strengthening, stretching or riding on horse. 3. Maintain the right position of the back Care of the right position of your back during the day. Think of the right seating by the computer. Remember on your back when walking or when standing. Don't cringe because it damages or deforms your back. Just that while brushing your teeth, don't bend over the hand basin, you abate the pressure pushing on the back in 50%. When sitting, keep your legs to the ground and high back stick to the chair back. We recommend to place roller or rolled tower between the small of the back and chair. 4. Visit the specialist Back pain cannot be eliminated by ibalgin or aspirin, that is why you should consider training with specialist, physiotherapist or visit of the remedial center. As a last resort, there is a need to consult with a doctor. 5. Strengthen the core of the body The effective way to get rid of pain is to strengthen the abdominal muscles and muscles of the back. When you exercise the back but don't think of abdominal muscles, there is only 50% work. Abdominal muscles serve when turning the waist and also when bending the back. 6. Apply the ice or dry heat in the case of edema, apply the ice on the place of pain for 48 hours, then focus on the dry heat. We recommend you to use heating pillows or to try hot bath during the back pain. 1, 2, 4. 7. Sleep in the right position Bad quality mattress and bad position during sleep can also cause the back pain. In the case when you sleep on the side, give the pillow between bent legs. When you sleep on the back, buttress your knees with a pillow. Sleep in the position on the belly is not recommended at all, it harms the cervical spine. 8. Stop smoking Smoking is a bad habit, with many negative impacts. Hardly anybody knows that smoking damages back. Study confirmed that smokers in comparison with non-smokers suffer with back pain lot more. 9. Relax Try meditation, yoga, pilates or tai chi, as an instrument for abreaction along with stretching. It will help you to release the stiff back and to engage also inactive back muscles into motion. 10. Go to the massage Be careful. Even during this activity, the regularity is needed. One massage per week for 10 weeks can really help you to release from the pain. Rehabilitation with the experienced chiropractor is also the right way how to help your back. The visit of the certified specialist is recommended. 11. Supplement vitamin D, K and calcium Strong and healthy bones are prevention from osteoporosis which belongs to the most frequent causes of the back pain especially within women. 
Increase receiving of vitamin D, K and calcium to prevent from this unpleasant illness. 12. Take off the heels whenever possible, instead of high heels take the comfortable shoes without heels. Wearing high heels causes pain and higher pressure in the small of the back area. Shoes with heels higher than 3 cm create unstable space for the right body control. When you should consider the doctor visit. In case you follow the above mentioned tips and your condition doesn't improve, it is time to visit the doctor. The warning signals might be these criterions. Back pain annoys you more than 6 weeks pain isn't improving, only worsening you are less than 20 years, or more than 55 years you suffer with the pain even when soft knocking on back you have temperature or you are fatigued. You quickly lost weight as a consequence of diet or illness there are signs of insensitivity or pins and needles you have lower sensitivity of groins you pee slowly or have urinary incontinence. If you have noticed these symptoms on your body, it doesn't have to mean that you have ill back. It is good to visit doctor though. The worst possible causes of the back pain neglecting the back can lead to very serious health problems which are very rare. Most of them are cause of serious symptoms which are at an early stage and you don't have to notice them. It usually doesn't take long until you know about the illness. The most serious illnesses of the back are. Cancer, the pain is made by the pressure of tumor pushing on the back. It is concerned with the pain which grows and cannot be influenced by the body position or by the physical activity. The most painful it is during the night or while lifting the weight. Infection of the back causes back pain in the case when it is near the vertebras. This illness is very difficult to detect. Aneurysm of aorta abdome is illness when the part of aorta gets bigger. When aorta gets bigger near the back or is going to blow out it causes the pain of the back. Usually occurs within older people, obese hypertensive smokers or diabetes. Ankylosing spondylitis is a chronic inflammatory illness which causes permanent pain and stiffness of the back. Men are the most frequently affected by this illness. These illnesses affect the minority of people with back pain. More frequently the cause is osteoporosis, shorten or flabby muscles of the middle of the body or long-time damaging of the back by the bad standing or seating. Every doctor prescribed the back exercises for this. 20 The most effective exercises for your back painful back worries even younger generation of people today. The causes are following. Shorten muscles weak muscles of the middle of the body stiff back because of the seating job nailed nerve. Overweight back, for example because of carrying a heavy bag on one shoulder osteoporosis obesity higher weight during pregnancy. One of the forms how to prevent pain or eventually to get rid of the pain is regular strengthening of the middle of the body. Save time from going to a specialist and begin with exercising today. We bring you a list of the most effective exercises for the back which are combination of strengthening and stretching exercises. 1. Bird dog pose go on your knees and put your palm on the floor the way your body reminds of dog. Extend your arm forward and at the same time extend your left leg. Keep your back straight and keep your hips neck and neck with the floor. Hold for 30 seconds and then put your leg and arm back into the initial position. Repeat also with the left hand and right leg. The adequate alternative of this exercise is also lifting of the right hand and right leg simultaneously. 2. Bridge lie down on the pad, put your arm along the body. Bend the knees and keep your feet on the pad. Pull the butt and abdominal muscles in and raise your hips to the height about 15 cm above the floor. Your body creates a straight line from the shoulders to the knees. Hold for a few seconds and slowly put your hips on the pad. Repeat for 30 reps. 3. Bridge leg lifts lie down on the pad, put your arms along the body and bend the knees. Lift your right leg and grasp thigh with both hands. Slightly pull knee directly to the chest and left leg directly to the middle of the body. Pull the butt in and push the pelvis up. Hold and get back to the original position. Repeat for 20 reps with each leg. 4. Plank get yourself to the position of plank. Transfer the weight of the body to the tiptoes and forearms placed on the pad. Keep your elbows directly under shoulders and head at the level of the back. Your body should be looking like straight line from shoulders to the heels. Pull off the muscles of the whole core and hold at least for 30 seconds, while focusing on the right technique. 
5. Side plank Put your left hand together with left thigh on the floor. Straight your legs, put your feet over yourself the way your body was in one line. Join the muscles of the middle of the body and pull yourself up. Transfer the weight on left palm and left foot. Keep your right arm straight, head is directing upward. Your body will be looking like T letter. Hold for 30 seconds and change the sides. 6. Deep lunge stand with legs at shoulder width apart. Put your palms on your hips or behind head. Lift your left leg and place it two steps backward. Both knees bend to the 90 degrees angle and imitate the motion such as kneeking. Left knee is above the pad. Right knee is above the right ankle. During this exercise you should join the muscles of the middle of the body, abductor muscle and legs. Then shift the legs. Repeat 20 for reps. 7. Swimmer lie on the belly. Keep your arms and legs straight. Lift legs and arms at the same time above the pad. Your body should be looking like arc. Then begin swimming, alternately lift right arm with right leg and left arm with right leg. Repeat for 30 seconds. 8. Reversed plank sit down on yoga mat pad. Put your palms behind the back and put your feet on the pad. Lean on your hands, pull the muscles and lift the torso. Your body creates straight line from head to the tiptoes. Hold for 30 seconds. 9. Sphinx lie on the belly, keep your legs extended. Bend your arms in the elbows and place them along the body. Head is facing the floor, neck should be kept straight. Join the muscles of the back and lift the front part of the body on the elbows. Keep in the position for 5 to 10 seconds and slowly get back. Repeat for 8 to 10 reps. 10. Lower back rotational stretches lie down on the back with rolled towel under head. Extend the arms on the side and put the bent knees on the pad. Keep your knees to each other and bent legs slowly to roll to the right side. Pay attention that your upper back and shoulders stick to the pad. Repeat 8 to 10 times for each side. 11. Cat stretches get on your knees and put palms at shoulder width apart on the floor. Along with the breath, open the chest and bend the back like cat. Pull the head and neck up to the ceiling. Along with the breathe, round the back and place the head the way you can see on your feet. Repeat 10 to 15 times. 12. Cobra pose lie down on the belly, keep the legs extended and put the palms next to the shoulders. With the help of the muscles of the middle of the body lift yourself on the palms and keep the elbows extended. In this position hold for a moment and repeat for 1 R 5 reps. 13. Bicycle abs crunches lie down on the back, put your palms behind head. Bend the knees and keep your feet on the floor. With the help of the abdominal muscles, try to bring right elbow near to the left knee. Keep your right leg extended above the floor. Get back into the initial position and repeat with left hand and right leg. 14. Crunches on the exercise ball, put your back on the exercise ball the way like laying on it. Legs bent in knees are on the floor. Cross the arms behind head and with the help of the abdominal muscles pull the chest and shoulder blades up. Hold for a moment and get back. 15. Downward facing dog during this exercise you will stretch the whole back. Stand and bend over and touch the pad with the palms. Hold for 10 seconds and feel every muscle. When there comes a pain of hamstrings or calf, slightly bend the knees. 16. Knee to chest stretches lie on the back, keep your legs extended. Grab your right leg above the knee with both hands and try to pull it to the chest. Keep in the position for 5 seconds and shift the legs. Repeat for 10 reps with each leg and you surely get rid of the pain in low back. 17. Wall squats stand with your back to the wall. Put your feet one step off the wall and lean on the wall with your back. Slowly begin to lower down to the squat position. The aim of this exercise is to get the legs to the right angle and your knees shouldn't be ahead of tiptoes. Keep in the position for 5 to 8 seconds and slowly get back to the original position. Repeat for 3 to 4 series per 10 reps. 18. Rolling back for this exercise you need the foam roller which is an excellent fitness tool for muscle release. Lie on the pad, bend knees with the feet at the shoulder width apart. Put the roller under the back and cross the arms behind head. Lift the hips and transfer the body weight on foam roller. With the help of roller, massage your upper back, shoulders and lower part of the back. 
19. High plank begin with the position on arms and knees. Knee on the floor and put the arms directly under shoulders. Lift the torso up so the body weight is on the palms and tiptoes. The hips shouldn't drop below and back shouldn't round. Keep the muscles of the middle of the body in tension and hold for at least one minute. 20. Arm rotation Stand with feet at the hip width apart, touch your shoulders with arms and begin the rotation forward. Trace the big circles with elbows. Then change the direction and rotate the arms backward. Repeat for 10 reps. This exercise helps to release stiff upper part of the back. We believe that these exercises will help you to win over unpleasant back pain once and for all. What are your experiences with back exercises? Which of them you practice every day? Write your answers to the comment area and extend the article by sharing, so your friends and acquaintances acquired important knowledge about the back pain. Causes and Risk Factors of Sharp Low Back Pain Low back pain that's sharp and severe tends to come on suddenly and to be acute, that is, lasts for no longer than three months. Potential causes of sharp low back pain range from a sudden injury such as a spinal fracture or sprain to degenerative damage to vertebral discs to sciatica, among others. When the precise cause of sharp low back pain cannot be identified, it falls into the category of non-specific back pain. Whatever the cause, low back pain is a common complaint, an estimated 80% of adults experience an episode of low back pain at some point in their lives. Most times, it will resolve itself within a few days or weeks. Common causes sharp, piercing pain usually is associated with a problem in the spine that occurs as a result of a simple, seemingly benign movement such as twisting or lifting something heavy. Muscle strain A strain is an injury in which tendon or muscle fibers are overstretched or torn, triggering inflammation. When the low back is affected, the pain often emanates from the buttocks and may extend down the back of one or both legs. Other symptoms of muscle strain include stiffness, muscle spasms, and difficulty moving. Muscle sprain A lower back sprain, also called a lumbar sprain, occurs when ligaments, the tough bands of tissue that connect bones to bones, are torn from their attachments. Sprains can result from stretching or tearing a ligament, oftentimes due to an injury such as a fall or some action that displaces the surrounding joint from its normal alignment. A sprain can range from a mild ligamentous stretch to a complete tear. Bruising, swelling, instability, and painful movement are common symptoms experienced after a sprain occurs. A sprain, like a strain, may cause painful muscle spasms. Facet joint pain Facet joints are located behind the vertebrae and help to protect the spine from extreme movements in any direction. They can be injured by a sudden jolt, such as whiplash, in which the spine is pulled out of alignment. Even the simple action of bending over to tie a shoelace can trigger facet joint pain. Facet joints also are susceptible to degenerative arthritis, osteoarthritis, in which the cartilage that surrounds and cushions each joint wears out, eliminating protective cushioning between the vertebrae. Pain can be felt when the bones rub against each other. The sharp pain caused by facet joint injury or degeneration can radiate from the lower back down to the buttocks and upper legs or up to the shoulder blades. You may feel as if your spine has locked up and even be unable to move for a few minutes. Spinal fracture A spinal fracture, also known as a compression fracture, occurs when vertebrae collapse under the load of an external force. This is common in traumatic spinal injuries or after a bad fall when a vertebra is squeezed or crushed. In older adults, such fractures may be caused by loss of bone density associated with osteoporosis. Spinal fractures tend to cause sharp low back pain when a person is standing. Vertebral fractures due to osteoporosis may not cause symptoms at first. Sacroiliac joint dysfunction The two sacroiliac SI joints located on either side of the lower back between the sacrum and the pelvic bones act as shock absorbers, decreasing stress on the pelvis and spine. When you stand or walk, the SI joints help transfer the load from your upper body to the lower body. Repetitive stress from daily movement or injury can wear down the cartilage around the SI joints causing low back pain and limited motion in the lower back or hips. The intensity of sacroiliac pain typically is related to the extent of damage to the joint. Point one, when this cartilage is damaged or worn away, the bones begin to rub against each other. 
Movements or positions that stress the joints, such as standing up from a sitting position, walking upstairs, turning over in bed, or bending and twisting, can worsen pain in the lower back and hips. That pain may radiate to the groin, thigh, below the knee, or buttocks. Activities such as running or jogging that subject the body to continuous and repetitive pounding can also lead to sacroiliac joint pain. Injury or trauma to the ligaments surrounding SI joints, spinal surgery, uneven leg length that affects walking patterns, or pregnancy also can trigger SI joint pain. In the case of pregnancy, any damage usually is temporary and resolves after a woman has delivered her baby and is no longer carrying around extra weight. Sciatica sciatica occurs when there is pressure or damage to the sciatic nerve, which starts in the lower back and runs down the back of each leg. The sciatic nerve controls the muscles in the back of the knee and lower leg, and makes it possible to feel sensation in the back of your thigh, lower leg, even the soles of your feet. When the sciatic nerve is compressed you may feel a burning sensation and pain. If the nerve is pinched, you may also feel numbness and weakness in your leg because the nerve signal has been interrupted. In some cases, sciatica may be caused by a tumor or cyst that is pressing on the nerve or nerve roots. Disc damage Sharp low back pain from herniated or ruptured discs can occur when the intervertebral discs become compressed and bulge outward, called herniation, or rupture. When a disc herniates, or slips, all or part of it is forced through a weakened part of the disc, exerting pressure on surrounding nerves or the spinal cord. A disc can also rupture, or break open, from injury or strain. Because they act as a cushion of sorts, intervertebral discs facilitate a full range of lower back movements, such as flexing, bending or twisting. But disc deterioration reduces that cushioning. Besides sharp low back pain, it can also cause some people to lose several inches of height. Small tears, annular tears, that occur in the outer layer of the intervertebral disc can also cause acute low back pain. The pain can be severe, even if the amount of tissue damage is minor and it repairs itself quickly. Lifestyle risk factors Excess body weight, repetitive bending or twisting the lower back, lifting heavy objects the wrong way, sitting or standing for hours in the same position, and a generally sedentary lifestyle all increase your chances of experiencing sharp low back pain. Some research suggests that smoking may also cause sharp low back pain. A word from very well low back pain is one of the most common medical conditions in the United. Many times, if you have a sprain or strain, the pain will resolve itself. But by addressing your back pain, whether by seeing a doctor or making sure your daily life includes plenty of movement, you can help prevent sharp low back pain from turning into a lifelong condition. Exercises to relieve upper back pain, neck pain, and more. What you can do ouch. Neck and back pain cramping your style? Regardless of the cause, hunching over a smartphone, sitting at a desk all day, or even injury, stretching and strengthening exercises can go a long way in your recovery. Below, we've compiled 17 moves to help stretch and strengthen the muscles in your neck shoulders upper back mid back lower back with some daily commitment, you'll be in less pain in no time. Let's get started. Stretch first First things first, loosen up the muscles in your problem area with a good stretch. Stretching helps restore and maintain flexibility, promote range of motion, and improve blood flow, all of which can alleviate pain, trusted source. Pick a handful of the stretches below and run through as many as you can at one time. Try to spend at least 30 seconds, ideally 1 to 2 minutes, on each move. Neck side bend and rotation stand or sit facing forward, and begin by tilting your neck to the right. You should feel the stretch through your neck to your trap muscle. After about 10 seconds, slowly roll your head in a counterclockwise direction. Pause for 10 seconds when you reach your left shoulder. Complete the rotation by ending where you started. Repeat these steps rolling in a clockwise direction. Repeat this sequence 2-3 to three times. Good for neck and upper back. Shoulder roll stand with your arms down at your sides. Roll your shoulders backward in a circular motion, completing five rotations. Then complete five rotations forward. Repeat this sequence two to three times. Good for shoulders and upper back. Overhead arm reach sit in a chair, facing forward with your feet on the ground. Extend your right arm up above your head and reach to the left. 
Bend your torso until you feel the stretch in your right lat and shoulder. Return to start. Repeat 5 times, then do the same thing with your left arm. Good for, shoulders and upper back. Pec stretch you'll need a doorway for this stretch, trusted source. Step into the doorway and place your forearms on the door frame. Make sure your elbows are bent at a 90 degree angle. Let the weight of your body fall forward slightly so that you feel a stretch in your chest and shoulders. Hold for 10 seconds and release. Repeat 3 times. Good for, shoulders and upper back. Chair rotation sit sideways in a chair. Your right side should be resting against the back of the chair. Keeping your legs stationary, rotate your torso to the right, reaching for the back of the chair with your hands. Hold your upper body there, using your arms to stretch deeper and deeper as your muscles loosen. Hold for 10 seconds. Repeat 3 times on each side. Good for, upper, mid, and lower back. Cat cow start on all fours with your neck neutral. Your palms should be directly under your shoulders, and your knees should be directly under your hips. On your next inhale, tuck your pelvis and round out your mid-back. Draw your navel toward your spine and drop your head to relax your neck. After 3 to 5 seconds, exhale, and return to a neutral spine position. Then turn your face toward the sky, allowing your back to sink toward the floor. Hold for 3 to 5 seconds. Repeat this sequence 5 times. Good for, mid and lower back. Child's pose start on the ground on all fours. With your big toes touching, spread your knees as far apart as they'll go and sit your butt back onto your feet. Sit straight up with your arms extended above your head. On your next exhale, hinge at the waist and drop your upper body forward between your legs. Allow your forehead to touch the floor, your shoulders to spread, and your butt to sink back. Hold for at least 15 seconds. Good for, shoulders, upper, mid, and lower back. Knee to chest lay with your back on the ground. Bend your left leg and bring it to your chest. Hold for 10 seconds and release. Repeat with your right leg. Complete the whole sequence three times. Good for, lower back. Thoracic extension for best results, use a foam roller or a chair. If you're using a foam roller, position it under your thoracic spine. Allow your head and butt to fall on either side. Extend your arms above your head to deepen the stretch. If you're using a chair, sit facing forward and allow your upper body to fall over the back of the chair. Extend your arms above your head for a deeper stretch. Hold either position for 10 seconds and release. Repeat 3 times. Good for, upper and mid back. Butterfly place your palms on opposite shoulders, and bring your elbows together to touch. Hold for 5 seconds and release. Complete 3 to 5 more times. Good for, shoulders and upper back. Then strengthen strengthening the muscles in your back, shoulders, and neck is vital to reduce and prevent pain. Choose a handful of the moves below to target them. Some of these moves involve dumbbells or resistance bands, and some just use your body weight. Pick a mix, if possible. Row use a resistance band or a light to medium dumbbell to complete this move. Affix the resistance band to a pole or other stable surface and grab each handle, extending your arms. Pull the handles straight back by bending your elbows, keeping them close to your body. You should feel your lats working. If you're using a dumbbell, hold it in your right hand and brace yourself on a wall with your left hand, arm extended. Hinge at the waist to a 45 degree angle, allowing the dumbbell to hang down. Keeping your neck neutral and your knees soft, pull the dumbbell directly up with a tucked elbow. Good for, upper back. Face pull use a resistance band to complete this move. Affix the band to a stable surface above eye level. Grab each handle with an overhand grip. Pull directly toward your face, flaring your upper arms out to the sides and squeezing your shoulders together. Pause and return to start. Complete 3 sets of 12 reps. Good for, shoulders and upper back. Scapular squeeze with your arms down by your sides, squeeze your shoulder blades together and hold for 10 seconds and release. Repeat 3 to 5 times. Good for, shoulders and upper back. Wall angels stand with your back flat against a wall. You may need to step your feet out slightly to allow your back to completely soften against the wall. Extend your arms out to create a T shape against the wall, then bend your elbows to create a 90 degree angle. 
slowly move your arms up and down in a snow angel motion, ensuring that they stay flat against the wall the whole time. When your fingers touch above your head, return to the start. Complete three sets of 10 reps. Good for neck, shoulders, and upper back. Reverse dumbbell fly grab two light dumbbells and stand, hinged at the waist at a 45 degree angle, with your arms hanging straight down. Keeping your neck neutral and your gaze down, begin to lift your arms out to the side and up. Squeeze your shoulders together at the top of the movement. Complete three sets of 12 reps. Good for shoulders and upper back. Lat pull down sit or stand underneath a resistance band attached to a stable surface overhead. Pull down on the band until your upper arms are parallel to the ground. Pause at the bottom, squeezing your lats, and return to start. Complete three sets of 12 reps. Good for shoulders and upper back. Superman lay on your stomach with your arms extended above your head. Keeping your neck neutral, lift your arms and legs concurrently. Make sure you're using your back and glutes to lift. Pause briefly at the top and return to start. Complete three sets of 10 reps. Good for mid and lower back. Things to consider you can complete a stretching sequence daily to regain mobility and reduce pain. Aim for at least 10 minutes per session. Make sure you warm up before jumping into the strengthening moves. Unsure where to start? Consider completing 10 minutes of cardio to jumpstart your muscles and get the blood flowing. Complete a set of strengthening moves at least three times a week for the most impact. Aim for a mix of three moves per session. The bottom line in some cases, neck and back pain can be treated at home. Daily stretching and regular strengthening may help you find relief. But if your pain persists, or worsens, with home treatment, you should consult a doctor or other healthcare provider. Your symptoms could be tied to an underlying condition that requires professional treatment. Please like, share, comment and subscribe this video. Thanks for watching my video.